groups on there, which we did last year, mm -hmm. um, kind of in your name. Anna. But if you would be willing to create a group or have them create a group in your name that we can share, I think we can get a lot more donations. As I'm you are super down. Ambassador. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to them because I, I want to help them in, in any way I can. That would be so cool. Because we will uh, join and spread the word. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. I would love that. Thank you. And someday I'm going to do a concert up there. Oh. We've already talked about it. Oh, yes. And so that, I think that'll be You know really, there's really going to cool. be a whole bunch of people. Give us plenty of advance. That's the whole point. Yeah, no, and, that, and that's the point. It's like, give people a bunch of advance, you know, so that people can come to the park and make sure about it. Yes. We'll have a show. Like it's so oh, cool. Was right there, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I've done it before with some colleges, but I think it'd be cool to continue to do that. Yeah, I would love it. Words and then um, and then melodies and then words, mm -hmm. right? But you said the only other thing you've ever done is write starting the title. So I wondered if you had you know a song or two that you wrote that way. So there are songs that I've written that way, but just none that I've released. Um, but I do really enjoy doing that. And, and when I get back into the writing season, which is gonna be soon, um, I'm definitely gonna do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Having experienced both the large stadium venues and the mm. small venues like this, I know it's a lot more fun and a lot more um, of an experience for the audience, but do you find the smaller venues better for you as a performer? I do. It, it depends. From time to time, the sound can be a little bit tough. Um, but besides that, if I'm just talking about the show and the energy, so much better. It's the connection in a small room like this, so intimate, it's palpable. And in a, in a stadium, there is a lot of energy, but it, there's just not as much connection, I don't feel like. At least, at least not for me. Um, but I'm also not opposed to playing stadiums if it happens. Um, but I am cherishing this, for sure. All right, someone. Oh, she hasn't asked one, so we'll do that. Um, so it may, may very be touched, I think, maybe by her first question. But when you're feeling like kind of like disconnected and stressed, where, where do you, how do you ground yourself? Like, how do you reconnect with yourself and like, yeah. <laughs> I would say one of the things that I do lately um, is, this is going to sound so hippy-dippy, but it's really a real thing, um, is I take off my shoes and socks and I go and walk in the grass. That helps me, and sometimes if I'm really not doing well, I'll run through the forest. That's okay. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but it really is amazing. I can't tell you how good it feels to run through the forest. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool thing. And um, that's what I do. Going outside, getting some sunshine, moving a little bit, does wonders. That's what I do. Yeah. Well. Um, just wanted to say congratulations on the last five years of your solo career. Thank you. I think uh, it is our five-year anniversary this month that I got to meet you. Oh, yeah, in, in Vermont? Vermont. In the month. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. It still amazes me that you don't know. <laughs> I do my best. I do my best to remember people. You do, you do very well. I'm not great with names. I do remember your name, but not everybody's all the time. <laughs> I could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my question is, um, following up on um, what was already asked about um, where you've been the last five years, how you've done. I, I, me, personally, I've been watching you. And you did just as I thought you would. You're doing awesome. And I'm very, Thank you. I am very proud of you, and I know there's a lot of people that Thank are you. very proud of you um, through the struggles. And so I guess my question is, um, retrospective five years, and then where are you going in five years? Where do you like to be? What are your goals? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, well, what was your question about the retro retrospective five years? Just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your journey, how's it been? Oh, how has it been? Okay, okay, okay. I understand. How have you grown? Um, it's been amazing. It was hard at first, um, as most journeys are. And um, it's been amazing to reconnect with myself and where I came from. And it's been amazing to do some healing. Um, it's been so exciting for me. 
it's been amazing to be able to grow as a musician and as a singer and as a songwriter. Um, it's, it's been really a beautiful experience. Um, in the next five years, I would just like to continue to do more of the same, grow uh, as a musician and a singer and a songwriter, and just bring my music to as many people as will listen, you know? I don't necessarily have like any um, quantifiable goals, uh, but I think that as long as I'm helping people with music, that's it. Keep going, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It, uh, yeah, it just, I'm sure everybody here has one of those songs where it's just like, oh, this is, this makes me feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of history with that song and with that artist, so that's why. Um, I'm Lauren, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, and I just wondered, um, do you have either now or in the past a favorite instrument and why is it your favorite? Did you get it from somewhere special or? Oh, oh, I oh my instrument. Better. Yes, your instrument. That one. Uh, yeah. this is, so this is uh, my first guitar that I saved up to buy on my own. Oh, wow. um, and it's a pretty old guitar and I tune it down like a whole step plus a half step. Mm -hmm. So that's why you'll see me tuning it a lot tonight. I'll probably mention that again. <laughs> um, but that is my favorite guitar. And right next to that is um, another guitar that my uncle gave me. It's this really, really cool Giannini guitar. It has this really interesting teardrop shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, it nice. almost looks like a, like a medieval instrument. <laughs> Nice. And um, <laughs> so, of course, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. yeah uh, and all, obviously, it was my uncle's, so. Right. Yeah. Is that Lady Love, then? This is. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. In uh, March, mm. because yeah. of all the terrible events, I guess. So, um, she's a big fan of yours, and she asked me uh, to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. So, the first question <laughs> is, um, when do you realize that you have a base? Is it, does it happen after the voice breaks or like, how does it I mean it might be a technical question but we're not yeah so um, my voice changed after eighth grade in between eighth grade and freshman year of high school during that summer break and so when I went to high school that next that next year uh, all my friends were looking at me very very weird with their voice, <laughs> voice uh, no. in a totally different place um, so yeah there's another question. How do you feel about using uh, auto tune? Is it a friend or foe? Is it? I think it is music's biggest foe. Yeah, really? I really, really do. I hope I don't offend anybody by this. No. But I think that I'm not a very opinionated person. I don't feel like, but that is one thing that I just feel like has really been music's biggest foe. I feel like. Before autotune came around in the 60s and 70s, you know, and, and, and before, the only way that you could be successful in music was if you were good enough, if you were one of the best in the world. And that is why music back then was so unbelievable, is because you had the best people doing it. And it wasn't about, it wasn't about what you looked like, it wasn't about anything else but the music. If you were good enough to do it, then, then you did it, you know? Um, and I think that these days, because it's so easy to make yourself sound good, um, that anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the people that are willing to sacrifice um, the integrity uh, kind of rise to the top, and that is why music has gone downhill. At least this is my theory. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> but that is how I feel about it. So you yourself would never... Would never I think that... I, I've been I've been thinking about it a lot. It's it's one of those things. It's like there's there's a there's a phrase, uh, work smarter, not harder. And you know I I really have cared so much about not tuning into my vocals because the music that I really care about uh, they didn't have that luxury. And so I want to challenge myself to be good enough to not have to. Um, and just put the work in that they did in order to, you know, make that happen. But on the other hand, 
not really anybody else is doing that. And things move so much faster these days. Like back then, they took months to make a record and people are making records in weeks. So it's like, it's an interesting thing. It's a struggle that I go through. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. I'm glad. Tell her I said hello. I would honestly love that, and I thought about doing it. Um, I think that, like with kids, it's it's easy to, you know, because they're all in schools and they're already in choirs, and it's 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 an easier thing to organize. But I do think it's really important. Like of all ages, everybody loves to sing. Well, not everybody, but <laughs> even, but all ages love to sing. You know, um, and I think that that would be a really really beautiful thing. I think the tough part is like figuring out uh, the best place to do it, where the most people that want to do it will be able to make it easily. Mm. But it is something that I would love to do. So, say again? You might need a stadium. Yeah? <laughs> I would not be mad at that. But, but I, I, I really, I would love to do that. And someday I will. Absolutely. Thank you. And actually, my, my first dream was to be a choir director. Uh -huh. And um, so I was going to school uh, for opera and for choral conducting. Yeah. And so my goal was to have a high school choir. And so, so now I'm able to do it and also perform the music that I've always wanted to perform. So it's a win-win. Yeah, thank you. I, I agree. It's it's a thing I'm most proud of in my life. It's had such an amazing impact on people. If I were just a little bit younger, <laughs> I I would absolutely have joined myself, which is why I made it. <laughs> I, I wanted there to be something for those like ultimate choir nerds from all around the world. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah. I was just wondering because kids get discouraged easily sometimes, um, and. What would be your advice? What would you say to a kid that was getting discouraged with their music? Just because... Um, like, discouraged in what way? Well, like... like their I, songwriting or yeah, like performance? Yeah, like, just or... in, in their performance, they think, well, I'm no, I'm no good, even though it's just mm. as perspective. Sometimes it's just... Well, what, I, what I've told my students in the past is that no one, no one can ever hear their voice or hear their music like other people do. You're always going to be your own worst critic, and yes. it you have to really be able to tune that out and continue to forge forward. I mean, I still have, like, all the time, wishing that I was better at this or that, and mm -hmm. I think that it's really important to acknowledge that and let that refine your skills, mm -hmm. but not let it bog you down so much that you don't even try. Yeah, you know. So I think it's it's such a beautiful thing to always refine and get better, but if you let that part of yourself rule your life, you'll never, you'll never grow, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, so that's what I'd say. It's good advice. Thank you. Yes. You were talking about how Nashville is such a collaborative town, and I noticed that pretty much every track on, uh, on the current album has a co-writer. Mm -hmm. So I wondered, like, does, does your co-writer often perform the same function? Like, I don't know, lyric input, or is it totally different for each person? It depends. Um, you know, a few of the songs on the record I wrote on my own, mm -hmm. and then I took to a friend to be like, just edit a little bit. If, you, if there's anything you feel like it's really important to write my own melodies, mm. um, and I think that from time to time, melodies will come from other people that feel good to me, and I, I will accept that. But it's really, really tough for me to, you know, if I'm like, if I'm writing with someone, if the melodies aren't coming from me, then it doesn't really feel like me. So um, people serve different purposes, but yeah, that, that's what I would say. Everyone, everyone serves a different purpose. Yeah. specialize in completely different music styles, kind of like 
you know, those famous collaborations that Sting does, but sometimes they, they turn out to be masterpieces. Would you like to try something completely different for you? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the things I'm most excited for in this career is to be able to collaborate with other people in different genres because I love different genres so much. Um, I love all different types of music and I love creating all different types of music. And so that is absolutely a dream of mine, 100% open.